Good morning. Welcome to St. Angela Marici Catholic Church. We are so happy you are with us today as we celebrate the fifth Sunday of Easter. There are several new procedures that we have put in place for everyone's safety. A few of them might be confusing at first, and so we would like to explain them. One change that has been made for the time being is that we will not pass the collection basket. We will have baskets for you to place your offerings in on your way out. Another is our dismissal. We ask that you not leave following communion. We have a special procedure for dismissals. Once Mass has ended, ushers will dismiss each family individually, and your exit will be the one closest to your pew. Lastly, for communion, we are asking for everyone to stand and remain standing at their pew. You will not come forward for communion. Father will come to you. Remain standing, keep your mask on, and hold your palm of your hand, waiting for the Father to pass, um, I'm sorry, Put, keep your mask on and hold your hands out to receive communion. Father will place the Holy Eucharist on the palm of your hand, wait for Father to pass by you, then lower your mask and consume the Eucharist. Place your mask back on, and then you may kneel for the rest of the rite. Receiving communion on the tongue is not permitted at this time. Thank you for your cooperation. Please stand. name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God our Father, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Very happy Mother's Day to all our mothers here and at home. Very nice to see you here in this beginning of a new beginning. And we recognize God's love and mercy in our midst today. As our Easter season progresses, we find ourselves focusing less on the early church and more on what we are to do now. Jesus gives us a roadmap in today's gospel if we are willing to listen to him. As we gather for our celebration today, let us give thanks for Jesus, our guide, and pray for the faith to follow as he asks. 
Lord Jesus, our brother and guide, Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, our way and our truth, Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, our life and our hope, Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and lead us to life everlasting. Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, constantly accomplish the Paschal mystery within us, that those you were pleased to make new in holy baptism may, under your protective care, bear much fruit and come to the joys of life eternal. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. As the number of disciples continued to grow, the Hellenists complained against the Hebrews because their widows were being neglected in the daily distribution. So the twelve called together the community of the disciples and said, It is not right for us to neglect the word of God to serve at table. Brothers, select from among you seven reputable men filled with spirit and wisdom whom we shall appoint to this task, whereas we shall devote ourselves to prayer and to the ministry of the word. The proposal was acceptable to the whole community. So they chose Stephen, a man filled with faith and the Holy Spirit, also Philip, Prochorus, Nicanor, Timon, Parmenas, and Nicholas of Antioch, a convert to Judaism. They presented these men to the apostles who prayed 
and laid hands on them. The word of God continued to spread, and the number of disciples in Jerusalem increased greatly. Even a large group of priests were becoming obedient to the faith. The word of the Lord. A reading from the first letter of St. Peter. Beloved, come to him a living stone, rejected by human beings, but chosen and precious in the sight of God. And like living stones, let yourself be built into a spiritual house, to be holy priesthood, to offer spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. For it says in scriptures, Behold, I am laying a stone in Zion, a cornerstone, chosen 
and precious, and whoever believes in it shall not be put to shame. Therefore, its value is for you who have faith, but for those without faith. The stone that the builders rejected has become the cornerstone, a stone that will make people stumble, and a rock that will make them fall. They stumble by disobeying the word, as is their destiny. You are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people of his own, so that you may announce the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his wonderful light. The Word of God. from the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus said to his disciples, do not let your hearts be troubled. You have faith in God, have faith also in me. In my Father's house, there are many dwelling places. If there were not, Would I have told you that I am going to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back again and take you to myself, so that where I am, you also may be. Where I am going, you know the way. Thomas said to him, Master, we do not know where you are going. How can we know the way? Jesus said to him, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you know me, then you will also know my Father. From now on, you do know him and have seen him. Philip said to him, Master, show us the Father, and that will be enough for us. Jesus said to him, Have I been with you for so long a time, and you still do not know me, Philip? Whoever has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, show us the Father? Do you not believe that I am in the Father, and the Father is? is in me. The words that I speak to you, I do not speak on my own. The Father who dwells in me is doing his works. Believe me that I am in the Father and the Father is in me, or else believe because of the works themselves. Amen. 
Amen, I say to you, whoever believes in me will do the works that I do and will do greater ones than these because I am going to the Father. The Gospel of the Lord. My brothers and sisters, of all the incredible and shocking statements that Jesus made during his lifetime, I really believe that this one has to be the most amazing of all. In fact, it's so incredible that I don't think we even believe that Jesus really meant it. Maybe it's just a metaphor for something else. Or perhaps it's just a figure of speech or something. But seriously now, whoever believes in me will do the works I do and will do greater ones than these? <laughs> Is there anyone in this church who can honestly say, I do the works of Jesus, and I do even greater works than his. And yet Jesus declares that whoever believes in him will do just that. And he even puts greater emphasis on it. Amen. Amen, I say to you. But let's back up for just a moment, take a closer look at the deeper meaning and the implications of what Jesus is saying here in St. John's Gospel account. Remember, this is Jesus' final discourse at the Last Supper, his last formal teaching, as it were, before he returns to his Father. And so he really gets down to the nitty grit of his revelation. Remember, sisters and brothers, Jesus not only reveals and teaches the message, but he himself is the message. And so both Jesus' actions and his attitude are just as important as the actual content of his, that his teaching has. So instead of you and I just skimming the surface of what he said, looking for what he might have meant, let's see if we can discover the deeper meaning by considering Jesus' attitude here. So what kind of a person was Jesus? A healer of broken bodies, broken hearts, compassionate, full of mercy, always ready to forgive, an encourager of people, and a builder of confidence. And most especially, as shown in this particular statement he made, Jesus was a person who was always looking to empower others, even when it meant doing that at his own expense. That is the attitude of Jesus. And that is to be our attitude as well, yours and mine. And let's not forget that that is also the attitude and example given to us by so many of our mothers whom we honor on this special day, Mother's Day. So let's just look at our first reading from the Acts of the Apostles today. Now the apostles were already modeling this attitude for us in Jerusalem. 
when they discerned a need to care for those who were being neglected in the church, what did they do? What was their example? Well, they lifted up and empowered others to do the work that was needed. And Peter begins his teaching by telling us in our second reading today that Jesus is the cornerstone of our spiritual life and our faith. But Peter also tells us that we too are living stones, chosen and precious in the sight of God to be built into a spiritual house. We are that house. You and I, like Jesus, are to be always looking for ways to encourage and to empower others. Even when it means doing so at our own expense. Even when our efforts are misunderstood, misinterpreted, or even rejected. Let me illustrate this point with a little story. There once were two men, both seriously ill, in the same small room in the hospital. Familiar story today, I imagine. In fact, the room was so small that there was only one small window in it looking out onto the world. One of the men could move somewhat and was allowed once a day to sit up in his bed next to the window. On those occasions, he could look out, which is why his bed was next to the window. But the other man had to spend all his time flat on his back, which is why his bed was not near the window. Now, every afternoon, when the man next to the window was propped up for his hour of treatment, he would pass the time describing to his roommate what he could see outside. From what he described, the window apparently overlooked a park where there was a lake. There were ducks and swans in the lake, and children came to throw them bread and to sail model boats. Young lovers walked hand in hand beneath the trees and there were flowers and stretches of grass and games of softball. And at the back, behind the ring of trees, was a fine view of the city skyline. At, this, the man, at all this, the man patiently described to his roommate to lift his spirits. He told him how a child nearly fell in the lake and how lovely the girls were in their summer dresses and all kinds of adventuresome things to pass the time away. His roommate could almost feel that he was there in the park. Then one afternoon, a dark thought hit him. Why should the man next to the window have all the pleasure of seeing what was going on? Why should he get the chance? It wasn't fair. He tried to stifle such thoughts, but each day, like Saul's jealousy of David, they became stronger and soured his soul. Something had to change. Well, one night as he lay with his thoughts, staring at the ceiling, the other man suddenly woke up with a start. He coughed and choked and tried to grope for the button that would bring the nurse running. The man watching all this silently managed to push the button just out of reach. In the morning, the nurse found the other man dead and quietly took his body away. As soon as it seemed decent, the man asked if he could be switched to the bed near the window. So they moved him, tucked him in, and made him quite comfortable. The minute they left, he laboriously propped himself up on one elbow and looked out the window. 
guess what? It was facing a brick wall. You and I, like Jesus, like the apostles, and like so many of our mothers, and like the man who sacrificed his life in our story, are to be always looking for ways to encourage, to lift up, and to empower others. Even if it means doing so at our own expense. If we are to be living stones, letting ourselves be built up into a spiritual house, then you and I must be willing to offer the only spiritual sacrifice that is acceptable to God. And what is that? Well, that is the sacrificing, the surrendering, or the letting go of ourselves to become a healer of broken hearts and broken bodies to be compassionate and full of mercy, always ready to forgive, an encourager of others, and a builder of confidence, a person who is always looking to empower others, even when it means doing so at our own expense. And it often does. These are the works of Jesus, And Jesus promises us that his disciples, you and I, will do these works and even greater ones than these. Brothers and sisters, let us now profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. God has made us a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a people set apart. And so we pray now for all those in need. For those baptized this year and for all the baptized in the world, that Christ's risen glory be our constant inspiration and joy. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For leaders and citizens of powerful countries, that their commitment to peace and justice may inspire others. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. 
for all of our mothers on this special day and for our grandmothers and all who have mothered and nurtured us in very many ways. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For an end to the pandemic and for the safety of our parish community, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those who are ill, And for all those who have died, including Mike Barker. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for all the prayers that we hold in the silence of our hearts. For these and for the intentions present in our parish prayer basket, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. O God, source of love and glory, hear these petitions, that all may know the love you hold for the world. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. At this time, the altar will be prepared for the Eucharist. Out of an abundance of caution, we will not be passing the collection basket. Also, just a reminder, if you hold hands during the Our Father, please only hold hands with your family members sitting with you. And the same is asked of you during the sign of peace. no greater love says the Lord than to lay down your life for a friend there is no greater love no greater love than to lay down your life for a friend as the Father has loved me brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, our Almighty Father. O God, who by the wonderful exchange effected in this sacrifice have made us partakers of the one supreme Godhead, grant, we pray, that as we have come to know your truth, we may make it ours by a worthy way of life through Christ our Lord. 
The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but in this time above all to laud you yet more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. For with the old order destroyed, a universe cast down is renewed, and integrity of life is restored to us in Christ. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exults in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim, by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son, and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, 
so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with St. Angela Marici and with all the saints, on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Daniel, our Bishop, George, our Auxiliary Bishop, the Order of Bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. the Savior's command informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other a sign of peace. Each other.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. We have entered the communion rite of the Mass, and we have two directives. The first is that we ask you to not leave after communion. We have a dismissal protocol to follow at the end of Mass. You will be dismissed one family at a time by the ushers. Secondly, for communion, we ask that you stay in your places as Father will come to you to distribute communion. We also ask that you stand and remain standing with your masks on until after Father has placed the Holy Eucharist in your hand. Once Father has passed by, at least six feet from you, then you may remove your mask to consume the Blessed Sacrament. Once you have consumed the Blessed Sacrament, then you may kneel for the remainder of the rite. Receiving communion on the tongue is not permitted at this time. Please stand.
Graciously be present to your people, we pray, O Lord, and lead those you have imbued with heavenly mysteries to pass from former ways to newness of life through Christ our Lord. Amen. Starting on the 11th, our weekday 9 a.m. masses will be open to the public on Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays with confessions to follow. We will continue recording the Masses on Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Saturdays from the rectory. Please read the parish flock note or visit our parish website for more information. If we could um, ask everyone to be seated except our mothers. If moms, you would remain uh, standing for a blessing. Loving God, as a mother gives life and nourishment to her children, so you watch over your church. Bless these women, that they may be strengthened as Christian mothers. Let the example of their faith and love shine forth. Grant that we, their sons and daughters, may honor them always with a spirit of profound respect. Grant this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. And may Almighty God bless you all, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in the peace of Christ, alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God, alleluia, alleluia. is risen.